you spend your days plugged into podcasts, reading articles, taking courses, listening to audiobooks, and watching YouTube videos like this one, I am right there with you. My name is Michelle, and I am addicted to learning. If you took a look at the amount of educational content I take in every week, you may wonder how I ever make any progress. And the truth is, I don't always make the progress I should be, especially considering all the cool information I take in. You can argue that I spend too much time learning and not enough time executing, and there may be some truth to that. There is a larger problem at play, one that is causing us to continually seek new information instead of implementing what we've already learned. Even if you don't consider yourself to be a lazy person, all of our brains are wired to conserve power. Functions like critical thinking and problem solving don't kick in unless we consciously put ourselves into that state or we are forced into it as a result of being thrust into a potentially stressful situation. Basically, the default mode is maintenance, where our minds seek to find solutions that don't require much thought. This is why we always want people to just give us a straight answer. Tell us in black and white, what is it that we need to do in order to solve our problem? This is what our brains are craving, and lucky for us, these solutions are out there everywhere. But something isn't adding up. If all the answers to all of our problems are out there, and we are ready to receive them, then why doesn't this formula always work? Why don't all of us have all the solutions to every single one of our problems? I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a minute, and let's put the blame on the person or the organization who is providing you with said information, your solution. Maybe if we look a little closer, we'll find out that they didn't really provide us with everything that we need to succeed. I'm going to use one of my favorite online entrepreneurs, Amy Porterfield, as an example. I'm choosing to highlight Amy because she's the person who gives you every single thing that you need in a concise way, and she even presents everything in a really aesthetically pleasing way, which, as a designer, I really appreciate. I cannot give you a better example than Amy as a person who always goes above and beyond to make sure that her audience has everything that they need to execute on an initiative, whether it be growing your email list or learning how to set up a webinar. I have downloaded countless guides and checklists from Amy over the years. So why is it that my business and my level of success is in a different place than Amy's? Is it because there is a missing piece of information that Amy neglected to share with me? Or was her information maybe wrong? I know that that's not the case because she definitely knows her stuff. So if it's not her, it must be me, right? I must be doing something wrong. Did I not follow her directions to a T? No, I definitely did. I did exactly everything that Amy told me to do. And that, that right there is why these solutions don't always work. You can read all the books in the world, get educated by the best, implement all of their strategies, following it to a T, but you will never see the levels of success that you are hoping for, that you know you're capable of until you switch out of that maintenance mode and learn to think and make decisions for yourself. And this is really hard because most of us don't trust ourselves. When we do, it means that we have to take ownership for our decisions. And a lot of the time this leads to failure and then us feeling terrible about ourselves. It's a lot easier to just listen to someone else and then we can blame them when things don't go well. In order for us to be truly successful, we need to take all of that information, all of that advice and knowledge, and learn to apply it to our unique situation. You are the only person who clearly knows exactly what it is that you need. There are people to guide us and to share their experiences, but it is up to us to take that information, think about it for a minute, and then run it through one of these mental funnels. Funnel one is, I need to do this. Your intuition tells you yes, there is no doubt that this is your answer and you need to take action right away. Funnel two is NA, not applicable to you. Not every piece of advice applies to us. 
If we followed every instruction and listened to everything that we heard, we would be running around in circles. The intentional decision not to take action can be just as powerful, if not more powerful, than your decision to take action. Funnel three is more info needed. This sounds like it might be a good solution, but there's some doubt there, either on the part of the person who's providing you with the information, like, do they actually know what they're talking about? But more likely, it's doubt in ourself that we can actually execute and make this happen. The third funnel is where most of us tend to get stuck, and it ends up turning into funnel two, which results in us not taking any action, purely because we don't wanna to have to make a decision. But when we wallow in this place of inaction, we can't possibly expect to see results. Going forward, I want to challenge you to remove that third funnel as an option. It's yes or it's no. Refusing to make a decision is tiring on our brains. Decide, is this information that you've just been given applicable to your situation right now? If it's not, let it go. Otherwise, be committed to trying it out. And take notice that I said trying it out, not succeeding at it immediately and when it doesn't work out, you feel like a big failure. This is a topic for another day, but in short, choosing funnel one means choosing to experiment and trusting that you will get it right if you stay committed. I would tell you to put this new tactic into practice next time you consume a piece of content, but you're already doing it. You're watching this video. So you can start right away. You can say, hey, that was some really good advice and I'm going to follow it. Or you can say, yeah, I don't know about this Michelle girl. Thanks for the tips, but they're not for me. As long as you commit or not commit, you are on the right path. Do not wallow in the middle. If you are someone who did find value in this video, please consider sharing it with a family member or friend, especially those who seem like they should be a lot further along in their progress based on the amount of information that you know that they're consuming every day. This could be their missing link and you can be the one to provide them with a solution. I want to hear from my fellow podcast junkies, bookworms, and chronic course takers. If you are committed to putting all of your learning into practice, type heck yes in the comments right now. If you wanna go a little deeper, tell me something that you just learned and the action you plan on taking to execute it in your way. I look forward to hearing how this tactic helped you make the progress that I know you are capable of.